The story of Woking Golf Club is a rich one. It all starts in 1893 when the club was founded by a group of barristers from the city of London, making Woking the first Heathland course in Surrey. The county of Surrey sits on ideal golfing land, rich, sandy and acidic soil that's given birth to many other of the UK's most revered and notable courses across the Surrey Sandbelt. But Woking is without question the father of them all. That paternal feel permeates every aspect of the club, with its appreciation for the traditions of the game, including the importance of swift play, camaraderie amongst its members, convivial atmosphere, and the importance of fun off the golf course. The land at Hook Heath makes for exceptional golfing. The ground conditions make this a fantastic all year round destination, with fast draining ground and firm and fast playing conditions. And the course enjoys beautiful views across the property throughout, with each hole perfectly framed by the indigenous flora, most memorably the stunning heather. Two of the club's most notable members, John Lowe and Stuart Patton, were local residents and members of Woking, and have had the greatest influence on the course we enjoy today. And in doing so, also changed the axis of golf course architecture forever, in particular, their famous work on the fourth hole. Patton, a past captain and chairman of the Greens Committee, took it upon himself shortly after the turn of the century to head out to the fourth hole and create the double centreline bunkers in the middle of the fairway. Previously, the somewhat bland golf hole offered little interest. Modest in length, without a bounce to the right, presenting the only significant challenge off the tee. The addition of the centreline bunkers is one of the first examples of strategic course architecture, presenting the golfer with the dilemma whether to play left or right of the bunkers, short or attempt to carry them. Now it's hard to understate the impact this had on course design in the next 30 years, as it's one of the first examples of incorporating decisions and strategy into the game. And whilst technology has given golfers more distance and a longer hitter might enjoy safer passage over the hazards on a clear day today, the strategic elements of this hole are a masterpiece and are as relevant now as they were 100 years ago and it sits as a proud moment to strategic course design. Carl Bianco has been the club professional at Woking for over 20 years now and knows the course better than anyone. We got to chat to him about the course. Even with all the technology and the, the youngsters coming through, the scoring hasn't changed. It's absolutely you know, phenomenal that it stands up. Uh, when for good players, stronger players, it, it is a lot of short iron approaches around this golf course. Yeah and nobody knocks the lights out, so it just stands up because the shot which could reward you the greatest is still fraught with risk. There's still a risk-reward element to pretty much every hole. It's uh, fascinating how to play at different weathers, different winds, different ground conditions. The strategically placed bunkering off the tee does mean that an accurate driving game is key. Its moderate length makes the course accessible for every golfer. But it's the greens at Woking that are the biggest defence. These are the most outrageously contoured greens you will ever play. Different plateaus, ridges, runoffs and false fronts punish incorrectly placed approaches and the slopes allow the golfer to play the ball along the ground if they so wish. If the greens are running at the speed we enjoyed, then going above the hole with your approach is a suicidal move. Pace of play is part of the club's mantra and as a predominantly two ball club with foursomes golf proving very popular, it's proof that a round of golf doesn't need to take five hours to be enjoyable, or even that you need to hit your own ball to have a good time. It's easy to see why with the veranda at the back of the 14th green, with the clubhouse in play, and many a story of shots played from inside its walls. History is all around you in the clubhouse. Constant reminders of John Lowe, Stuart Patton, Tom Simpson, Roger Weatherhead, and one of their past presidents, and arguably the greatest golf writer of all time, Bernard Darwin, who all played their golf right here at Woking. Whilst we were there, we spent some time with Woking president David Wright and club captain Chris Dwyer. And one of the, one of the interesting things about this course is that um, we have a short par four to start with and a relatively short par four to finish with. And some people say, well, you know, they're not much of a hole. But if you go over the back at the first, 
you can be in difficulty. And the 18th is the most fantastic match play finishing hole. Tom Doak uh, has written a book, a little red book on golf course architecture. And I think the only hole that gets a mention is the 18th. And he said, you don't need a big finishing par four. He, he likens this to the 18th at St Andrews. You think you can get a birdie, but sometimes you'd be quite happy to walk off with a, a, par, a, a par or a five. You know, it's, uh, it's, that, it's that sort of finishing hole. What I love most about Woking is the feeling of complete serenity. Located in the bustling suburbs of Surrey, a stone's throw from London, Woking feels like a complete oasis of calm. Corridors of trees not only act as a wall of defence to everyday life, but also seem to amp up the noise when you pipe another driver down one of its holes. It's these small evolutions at Woking that make it a really special place unspoilt by disruptive development plans with changes to large swathes of the course and its routing. Instead, Woking changes at its own pace, taking small steps to keep it just as relevant for today as it was back in 1893.